It's uh, 2.30 in the afternoon. Oh, oh into the police station. In fact, it's almost uh, four hours too early to start the night watch. But I received a hurry-up call. So uh, let's wheel on over to the desk and uh, see what's up. Hi, Lieutenant. Hi, Don. Sergeant Perkins wants you in the briefing room right away. Okay. You might give him this report. That's what it's all about. Okay, fine. Thanks very much. Well, here's the deal. Eight-year-old boy missing from home since yesterday noon. Possibly maybe victim of foul play. Well, that was the reason for the rush call. By the way, I'm a police recorder, and my name is Don Reed. And you're following us here on this investigation. As you do, remember one thing. The people you hear are not actors. This is it. This is real. This is what happens on the Night Watch. Uh, Indian type. Night Watch, the actual on the scene report of your police force in action. There are no actors, there is no script. Every voice, every sound is authentic. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. Night Watch is presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. We switch you now to the Detective Bureau and your police recorder, Don Reed. Stripe, green stripe. You're uh, listening to Sergeant Ron Perkins, who has been assigned by Chief Hildebrand to organize the search for this uh, missing boy. Now gathered here in the briefing room are the fire chief and his assistants, as well as the chief of police, who will assume personal command in the field. About 6.30 in the evening at Blabana Creek in Overland area. So we'll go on down to that point and work out of that point. We can start dispatching in both directions. Okay. okay. Right. Some poles and lights and walkie-talkies. Yeah. If you got everything have available enough. Uh, oh, yeah. We've yeah. we got up to your men here. We'll, 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 we'll take one truck down here. Well, that's our starting point. So let's move out to the La Bologna Creek area and set up headquarters. Yeah. It's uh, 3 p.m. right now, and we're located on a high bluff overlooking the creek. Now, um, here's a picture. Just looking overhead, the sky is very overcast and threatening rain. And if it does, well, this creek will become a raging torrent in a matter of minutes. Now, couple this with the fact that there's less than, I should judge, about two hours of daylight left, you can see the reason for our anxiety. Now, uh, Sergeant Perkins is talking to members of the Fire and Police Department, so uh, let's move right in on that conversation. Parson David, the motor officers will take the pavement. They'll ride the creek on the pavement. I see. And, uh, and now I've got these four boys here. You can take two with each crew, and they can check in the culverts and uh, that part of it. Well, now, uh, we've got some uh, our pike poles and uh, also grappling hooks. We'll rope along. Uh, it's needed. Yeah, it should be in any of the deep pools. Now to check out the deep pools. We won't find a deep one until we get below Inglewood. There's a pretty good one down there. There's one right down here, way just below that dam. But then these things will easily reach it. Yeah. yeah. But below below Inglewood, you see, we get a couple pretty good ones down there. You can't get too near the center of them. We may have to drag those, you know. Well, why don't you go down and check that area? I'll call you back and tell you you know, where the deep pools are at. See? Right. Okay, yeah. and you'll, you'll have two of your motors check the west, uh, yeah. east end of the... You'll take the upper end of the creek. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Well, if you want to do that, then we'll, we'll, we'll start these from here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Captain? Uh, Wilson? Yeah. You've got the lifeguard coming in from... Uh, uh, the lifeguard service is coming in from the ocean, up the Lona Creek, so they meet the firemen going down this way to the ocean. All right, fine. Well, we've got it pretty well covered here. Uh, Englander? Would you stand by here and be the contact here at the present time, Mark, and we'll meet you here. When the hot riders start coming down, start fanning them out through the hills, right? Yeah. All the way up? All through the hills. Yeah. Uh, cover every part of it they possibly can. All right. Mike, would you and Bob... Uh, I told Bob to work it from here because the hot rod clubs will be coming down. We've got the whole creek area covered now. And then if the hot rod clubs come, come down, would you handle the part of it up through the hills? Well, you want to have them go in car or yeah, walk in their cars, yeah. and they take two or three fellows in each car, uh-huh. and they can they can fan out on foot and look in the culverts and stuff like that too. In other words, you got a group on this way towards we, the we beach. We got the whole thing with both ways in the creek. Both we got the lifeguards coming yeah. in from the ocean, and we've got uh, the motor officers handling the part they can down there on the pavement, and the fire department's handling this rough stuff through here. We're going to have communication. Yes, uh, you've got uh, 
Here's another walkie-talkie right here. You can use that one right there. I can go in the opposite direction from the other walkie-talkie. Can you give us this one, Mike and I are going to blow off? Yeah, we're going to take the Hot Rod Association and go up in the hills. Well, do you know when they're going to... Do you know when they're going to be down, Don? Uh, no, I don't, Captain. Um, I don't know. I understand they'll be here after 4 o'clock. It's the only information we have. This little fall's been gone an awful long time. I'll tell you what we don't have covered. We don't have this area from the, the bridge up to where the pavement starts. So if any of the officers come down, get them going on that area there, on both sides of the creek, up to where the pavement starts. The motors are going to take the pavement right. The culvert's clear on in. Well, the search has been set up. Units have been dispatched. As I'm looking out here along Bologna Creek, the fire companies are out, moving along the creek with grappling hooks. I heard someone say it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Well, I guess that's probably true. Nevertheless, the search will continue as long as it's humanly possible. In other words, there's a boy missing somewhere. We'll find him. You probably can hear a radio going off in the background. Actually, that is a fire unit down here that is sending directions to the various mobile units that are operating here in the field. Behind me now, uh, Lieutenant Conlon is conferring with uh, Chief Hildebrand, so uh, let's get over there. These uh, waterfalls are coming out into the creek, got very dangerous gas in it, and uh, nobody can go in that unless they got gas masks on. And if they go back up two or three hundred feet into that, they become fixated and die. So I'm talk to this Mr. Jones up here. He's got men coming out with gas equipment to go back up in and check this for four to five hundred feet. You got better broadcast. The units won't have anybody going there for that until we have a you know, control. Five oh to control one. You're calling. Go ahead. Five oh to control one. Will you notify all units involved in the search down here to notify all of the men not to enter any closed culvert? Not to enter any closed culvert. We have an expert coming down from the flood control that will check them out for uh, sewage gas prior to anyone entering. Five oh, Roger. Control one to all units. All units. While this call is uh, being relayed to the other units in the field, uh, the chief just informed me that the four of us are going over to confer with the boy's mother. So uh, let's get back to our police car. tone of voice. I was angry at him. He had torn down the curtain in his room, and he had just turned his bed upside down. You know me. I'll hit him for a small thing, but when it's something this serious, beating doesn't do any good. No, it doesn't. We're doing everything we possibly can. That I'm sure. I mean, that's the only thing that's holding me on to my sanity altogether is confidence in you and the rest of the boys. Well, uh, we will continue all night long searching the creek bottom and up in the hills, and we've got a, an aerial squadron that's flying over the place. And I told Sergeant Perkins if we get him back alive, we should both yeah, get right. some assistance to see. Yeah. Well, you get all the assistance. Right now, you know. Yeah. If you, you, get all, you get all the assistance in the world if we find him and we do it. Oh, I hope we do. I hope we do. Well, well we, we will. Don't scared. worry about it. Don't worry about it. There's no use. We're going to go back up the area. Would you Look, stay here? You would. Of course no. I'm going to be. I can't go. Right. I'm too nervous to drive anymore. You yeah. see me? I was ripping that car around. Like... Look, um... I only ask that you keep notifying me, yes or no, good or bad. Well, I mean, that's the only thing that'll keep me going. Well, every well, hour or two, check with me. Right. Thank you, Chief. Okay. I, uh, I'm grateful for all the help you're doing and for the wonderful assistance everybody's giving me. We'll do everything we can and we'll keep you in Well, as we head back for our car, I think I know what's going on in the minds of these officers. Has he been kidnapped? Did he fall into a deep pool in that creek? But he have strolled into one of those caves and been overcome by gas? Well, you could ask a thousand questions and never come up with an answer. So far, not even the lead. Well, I guess this is where hard work and a prayer comes in. You are listening to Night Watch. The people you hear are not actors... And every voice, every sound is real. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. And now we switch you back to the field and police recorder, Don Reed. 
Uh, the concentration of the uh, search will be in the Baldwin Hills. Uh, the boy has been uh, identified as being in this area. So the uh, units that are working the creek and uh, that area may be pulled in. You just heard that uh, order given to Control 1 by Chief Hildebrand. The search is now being concentrated in the Baldwin Hills. I don't know whether you pick up that information. It was coming from one of our motorcycles quite a distance away. Stated that it's possible that this youngster was seen in the area that we are at the present time. No matter. Here comes another call. Five old automobile units that are not engaged in the search along by Fiona Creek. Will you concentrate now in the area? The new housing project up above Overland. We're in that area now. Do you hear somebody yell or is my imagination? A kid in the red over there. No, that's two guys that are helping. Check that cave over there. Well, it's, it's up the road. Okay. Is that an open gate there? I guess it is. I can see. Uh, it looks like it's open. Perkins down there coming up the hill. All right, what are you sweating about, Sergeant? Well, Running. Uh, we can pull that uh, peak search off. I think. We'll get again just observing out toward the hills uh, i can see the plane from the uh, sheriff's aero squad that is circling the hill area in an attempt to locate this boy but this much we've accomplished in the last hour i think we've established fairly well uh, that the youngster at least is alive and is somewhere in the hills area i think it's just a matter of time now before uh, we will close in because there are well, I wouldn't even hazard to guess the number of units that are looking for it, but it must be up somewhere in the 20s. Uh, five, two, Here comes uh, some more calls through. No, this doesn't relate to our situation other than just picking up some of the youngsters that are in this search. So now, we, all we can do is stand by here in car 57 and await for the developments. About another 45 minutes have passed now. And I'm still remaining here in the cars that are grouped around us. And I'm speaking now from the back of 5-7. Sergeant Perkins, here comes another call. No, that's not relevant to our situation here. Uh, Sergeant Perkins is in the field somewhere for the possibility of locating the youngster. We have remained here in this area. And as soon as a word comes from any of our units, uh, we will move directly to the scene. Well, there's a... Uh, Another call coming through. That was Sergeant Perkins on the other end saying that more men have arrived uh, to join oh, in this search. The father of the missing boy is up here in the hills searching along with the rest of us and right now is headed for our car. Did they finish dragging the creek? Uh, yeah, they worked on down a uh, considerable distance. I don't know as, uh, just how far they got, but uh, within the last hour, alive and was headed up toward the hill, so that's where we're uh, going to concentrate. The boys are doing a good job. Well, we want them to. <laughs> we'll do our best. Five, four to control one in all units. We have just found the boy. 
On Ranch Road and Hill Street, he's in 5-4 right now. He is okay. He's tired. We're going to take him to the station. Well, I think you heard that call, but just in case you missed it, the boy is safe and just tired and is in custody. And you can just uh, see as well as feel the tension released on the faces of everyone here. So let's get back and meet Car 54 with the youngster at police headquarters. I think you've all been found. Well, standing here in front of the police station, here's the picture. There must be at least, uh, oh, 20 photographers standing by, ready to snap a picture as the youngsters brought in. And, yeah, on my left, here's the father of the boy, anxiously watching the street for sight of the car that will bring the young fellow in. That's uh, car 5-4. It's coming in right now, and Lieutenant Lugo has the boy by the hand and is taking him over to his father as the flash bulbs continue to pop here. So it's quite an exciting moment. And Hill Street right where he's last seen that. Where are you in all night? Huh? In the car? Who's car? You know, I thought I had a punch when I was in somebody's what car. You went in somebody's car to sleep. Well, I made that signal last night, and of course there was a lot of cars around. We couldn't locate all the cars, didn't we? Whose car was you in? Yeah. My car? You were home in my car? No, I was in just in my car. Why didn't you come in the house? Well, Sergeant Perkins has the boy by the hand and is leading him now into the police station. A crowd is really gathering now. Onlookers, newspaper men, you name it, we've got them. Excuse me, please. And uh, so let's uh, get right on into the office. Excuse me. Excuse me. Here in the detective bureau, and uh, Sergeant Perkins is talking with the boy, along with Chief Hildebrand and Lieutenant Conlon. Where did you stay last night? My daddy's car. Your daddy's car? Did you stay there all night? Yeah. Where did you go when you got out of the car? Went around the corner. Went around the corner to the car? No. Where did you go? From the weeds next to the golf course. In the weeds? Yeah. Didn't you think that your mother and daddy would be worried about you? Yeah. They've been pretty worried. I don't think it was very nice to run away like that. How would your mother and dad know where you were? Where did you eat, son? Hmm? Where did you eat? I just ate a glass of water. Just had a glass of water? Mm-hmm. All you've had? Yeah. You yeah. see, with any time that you're away, if you are any time away, you should always try to find a policeman and tell them that you've got some trouble and then you don't have any more uh, trouble because uh, we know where you are and then we don't have to get a whole lot of people out and look for you. Glancing down the hall, I can see the mother of this young boy coming up the stairs being supported by her husband. As you can well imagine, she appears to be just about overcome with joy. But at the moment, I guess you can say, pandemonium reigns. Tears are pouring down the mother's face. And the father is standing by with Sergeant Perkins while the cameramen are firing pictures from every angle. Oh, you're uh, Sergeant Perkins. Oh, yeah. I heard about you on radio. Thank you. I don't think the boy should be punished right now, but we'd like to have him come back to one of the juvenile hearings, say, probably next Wednesday night, the three of you. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, we, got, we want to do something about it right away. There's no sense in sending my discharge. But in the, meantime, in the meantime, I don't think the boy should be punished. We will. Right. We will. Okay. Very good. Yes, well. We can stand some help. Because there's this thing here, uh, I mean, this is it, you know? Again, I appreciate everything everyone has done. And please tell all those men that... I think you ought to thank them all for helping you, don't you? Thank you. Bye, young fella. <laughs> You're not going to run away anymore, honey. You promised them on your words, on your staff, on Well, Sergeant, there he goes. Yeah, he's a lucky boy, Don. And it's after 6 o'clock. Let's get back to work. Why don't you uh, go down and get us some coffee? I've got reports to make. Take about 15 minutes. Okay. I'll meet you over in the office. Mm-hmm. You buy him? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. Ray, will you open the door for me, please? Sure, here you are. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Mr. 
coffee. Watch this pot. What's that going on out there? Uh, sorry to I've been around a lot of police departments in my life, but this is a new twist. Uh, I don't quite get it. Why the music going on out there? Well, Don, uh, did you see the woman sitting out there with the uh, record player? Yeah, yeah, I saw her. She came in the station a few minutes ago. Sergeant Green just um, called me and uh, brought this record player in, sat down, started playing it. You I mean, know. you mean she's just sitting there playing records? She's just sitting outside playing records. I just put in a call for Lieutenant Lugo. Uh, had him come in interview. I think we've got a psycho case on our hands. Uh huh. So uh, wait just a second. Let me see if I can. Right. Uh, go to the door, sir. Where's Lieutenant Lugo? Oh, wait a minute. Here he is. Here. Okay. Thanks. Hi. Coming in the office now, an elderly woman, perhaps, or well, maybe 75 years old, snow white hair, wearing old faded lavender dress, high collar, with old fashioned high button shoes. Sergeant Perkins is going out now to turn off the phonograph. And Lieutenant Lugo just whispered to me that he's very familiar with this case. Apparently, she's been in the station several times recently. You know, uh, we want to help you if we can. I know, I know. And uh, I, don't know. I talked to your niece, oh. and uh, she also wants us to help, she, help you. Yeah, she, she wants to help me. you. She's nice. Yeah, she's very nice. Nice. She's very nice. Yeah, but and, uh, she never touched me. You have been having a little difficulty with where you're staying? No. You haven't? Oh, you mean the hotel? Yes, at the hotel. Uh, yes, I come over. I want a room. The smell, the smell like pig. Oh. Yes. <laughs> well, did you find the clothes that you thought you had lost the other day? <laughs> yes. I come, I said, give me the, give me my suit. I tell you, afternoon, my sister come. He said, but I can find it. I never been in anything. You, yeah. You've uh, come here before. Yes. And come here for help. And we were we have sure. been trying you to locate. You. We've been trying to locate you to nice. help you. Yes. And uh, and I am so hurty. Honest. Yes. Officer. Surely. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> but he said to me, "You'll be some day for police station arrested." <laughs> I said, "What do you What do you think I am?" <laughs> Uh, you come here with several different types of problems here, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe that uh, you're the type of person who'd like to have some help. Sure. And uh, I think. Why that beat me? Why did that? No, no one is going to hurt you. No. And we're going to possibly go see a doctor that'll help you. I go for doctor. Well, we I have. Go today. <coughs> he told yesterday. He we have uh, we have some doctors that can help you, it's and not at a good right. hospital, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Possibly they can give you all the assistance that you need. Yes. We have tried to get your family uh, together yeah. to, mm -hmm. to agree on this, and uh, I, I believe that they are in accord with what uh, right, we uh, want to do to uh, help you. Uh -huh. So if uh, you uh, will uh, go along with us in a little while, we'll go down to Los Angeles, and uh, we will uh, take you to the hospital. Yes. And uh, I think it'll make you feel a yes, lot better. better, better. Well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm all right, if you'll just yeah. wait a few minutes... Yes. Do you yeah. want to? Uh, do you want to go with us now? Go with Miss Clark here. Wait yes. outside out here for yes. a minute. You mean I go? Uh, what you put right here? Wait yeah. outside out here, if you will. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. Did you want to give me? Yeah. 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 Just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Wait right out here. Watching her leave the room, she's heading for her record player. Here we go again. She's outside now, Lieutenant. Uh, playing the record machine again. What do you think? Well, uh, she's quiet, I guess, uh, sitting there, so I think you'd better assign a man to take her down to the 
General Hospital for observation. No case. She's, no, evidently a mental case. And possibly can get some help down there. All right, I'll get one of the officers, and then I'll have uh, Miss Squire uh, ride down as matron. That's fine. Okay, thanks, well, for... You bet. What you have just heard was real. Recorded as it actually happened on The Night Watch. And now, back to police headquarters and Chief W.N. Hildebrand. Tonight's action presented still another phase of police work, that of conducting an all-out search for this missing boy. As a result, police units from four different cities cooperated, including a plane from the Los Angeles Sheriff's Aero Squadron, Boy Scout groups, even hot rod clubs. While he was fortunate to have survived the first night without serious injuries, the second could have brought on a great tragedy. Once returned to his home, my department immediately became interested in still another phase of this case. Namely, what prompted the boy to leave home? Our juvenile bureau requested the boy and his parents to appear at a hearing where the situation was discussed and corrective measures taken. In the last case involving the 75-year-old woman that came to the station with her portable record player, she was taken to the General Hospital's psychiatric ward where an examination confirmed the investigating officer's report. For her own security, the subject was confined for hospitalization where she will be assured of constant attention and protection. The average citizen I know wants to aid his local law enforcement officers in every possible way. If we succeed in bringing this message to just a few, then our efforts shall be well rewarded in bringing you Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have just heard on-the-scene reports of your police force in action. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch, brought to you through the cooperation of your police department of Culver City, California is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hadlock, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and is described in the field by police recorder Don Reed.